Velkommen til Arkast. I denne episode kan du høre et interview med kunstneren Andres Serrano, der fortæller om sit fotografi Klansmann, der er en del af Arkens samling. Andres Serrano er født i New York i 1950. In 1990, I, I did a series of portraits called uh, the Nomads, and Nomads, uh, the Nomads were basically homeless people that I found uh, in the subways late at night, and uh, and so I did studio portraits of, of these people. Uh, and uh, a few months later, I decided to do some more portraits, but uh, you know, I wanted for them to be sort of unusual, and so I thought, well. Someone had a mask that would be an unusual portrait. And when I thought of masked people, I immediately thought of the Klan. Uh, I was surprised at uh, how human and maybe even vulnerable some of these people are, were, because uh, I met them when they, you know, before they had put on their masks and robes, and uh, you know we had to negotiate and talk about it first. And once they decided to pose, they would, you know, put the costumes on for me. And I was always impressed how the reality of the person behind the robe was one thing, but once they put on the, the masks and the, the robes, they assumed a, a power, you know, a, a sort of a transformation that uh, was not visible when they didn't have those clothes on. And most of the clan that I photographed uh, seemed to be uh, poor, working class people. And uh, you know, I, 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 you know, even the uh, imperial wizard, who's, who's the leader at the time, he was an old man, about 80 years old. And uh, I remember visiting him at his home and photographing him in his home. And he lived in a very small, very cluttered home. A, you know, something you would probably associate with uh, very poor white people in the South. And I, I was always uh, very. You know, I, I mean, I was impressed that uh, here all these clans people had come to town to pay homage to him during a, a clan celebration, and because he is a, an ex a leader of the clan, and yet he was a very impoverished man. And and I and one thing that he once said to me was, uh, you know, any niggers, any nigger in this country has more rights than a white man. And I feel that's indicative of some of how the some of the how some of the clan feel, they feel uh, as white people they have no power, no rights, uh, they're at the bottom of the barrel. And uh, you know, even the scapegoats need scapegoats. After I photographed uh, most of these clan people, uh, I didn't hear back from them, I sent them their portraits. Except a few months uh, after uh, I did the work, I, I had a show of, of the work in New York. And uh, someone called uh, the house at the time. I, I lived in Brooklyn and was married. And uh, he, he called uh, the house and spoke to my wife. And he said, oh, tell Andre he did good. I, I read the article. I like the picture. And uh, tell him he, he's still a brother and he's always welcome in Georgia, uh, just as long as he doesn't say nothing bad about the Klan. And she said, uh, oh, who's calling? And she said, a Klansman. And he laughed. And uh, that was it. And I think that was the Imperial Wizard that I had photographed at the time. Uh, because he, I, I figured, would be savvy enough to find my phone number. Because when I left town, I, I didn't leave my phone number. I think what I'm trying to do is uh, to go below the surface. A friend of mine said, you know what you do? He said to me, you like to champion the underclass. And I never thought of that. But he, he's right in the sense that I, I do you know, root for the, for the underdog. I, I identify with the underdog or the outsider many times. And so uh, I'm looking to find, uh, you know, what's below the surface, underneath everything. Uh, I'm looking to photograph the things that we know about, yet maybe we don't like to think about them. Uh, you know, I'm looking to photograph uh, the things we don't talk about.